Hello, this is Haku the Bean, and I am here with more tumbling to have fun after what happened yesterday. I kind of forgot that clever comebacks get so political sometimes. Anyway, let's get right into this. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Let's freaking go. If they removed Austin Powers, it would either be the most tone-deaf, unfunny, incredibly offensive movie in years, or they'd do it right and really keep with the times and being very self-aware, and it would be one of the best films of decades. Austin Powers would be a massive support for the trans rights because trans women means more women for him to shag. <laughs> oh, your pronouns are she, they? Well, baby, let... Emmy sheet him, him titties is shagadelic. Austin Powers discovers bisexuality and it blows his fucking mind. Immediately swaying. <laughs> Today I learned if Walmart paid its employees a living wage, prices would go up only 1.4%. That means your Xbox would only be about $5 extra. And only about 50 cents to $1 extra for your games. Reminder that numbers like these are of a corporate Asian is assigned to pass on all costs to raise their wage to a living wage onto a consumer. The correct answer of what it should cost you as a consumer for a corporation to raise your wages is zero dollars. I like to see it phrased as the equivalent of if employees paid its employee if Roman paid its employees living wage, a family that owns it would have to take a two percent cut to their yearly profits. Meaning they only it make two hundred ninety four million a year instead of three hundred million a year. Just to drive home how little they would need to pass on the costs of paying their employees of living wage to their, their consumers. Wow, my own giant red robot! I am now the luckiest kid in America! Don't be fooled, this is the saddest children's movie ever made. I like how he's the luckiest kid in America. Like, there's some Canadian in a hole with two giant robots. <sighs> How about if we all just buy our bread and mind our own damn business? This is the most German comic I've ever seen, and it's not even about Germans. Okay, I just now noticed the birds. I thought this was a comic about bread and respectful distance. I said with my point though. <laughs> I'll zoom in for this one. Oh, I know raccoon. Quick, it's about the main character. It's so weird how much of a raccoon's raccoonness is tied up in its pattern. This looks like a completely different animal. So sort of weird marsupial. I need to buy more plushies. 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 This is an international terrorist won by the US government. <laughs> 
Why the frick would you ever post your full name and address? You stupid freaking jerk, you deserve to get swatted. Do you honest to god think my full name is Walter Hartwell White and I live at 308 a, a Negra Oyo Lane? That's a weird name. What? Oh, it's a Breaking Bad reference. Constantly torn between if I show symptoms, I'm real invalid, and I can't show my symptoms because then I'll be a bother, so I have to internalize everything. Don't forget, if I can in control my symptoms, um, are they still valid? And if I show symptoms, I'm manipulating the people around me. Also, if I don't show symptoms at any, any moment, I'm lying with, about having a mental illness, and everything is an overreaction. Dies in the cell trap because of the little puppet video instructions played only once without subtitles, so I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. <gasps> the prophecy is complete. Ignore the background and noises, please. <laughs> <laughs> Soon may the well man come, your brain gets smart but your head gets dumb. Hey LP, what's the location? I just want to talk. Load. Shut the frick up. I hate this with every fiber of my being. You don't- you didn't need to share this. I just took 7 psychic damage. With respect, fuck you. I really wish I hadn't read at that. Why would you do this to me? Not SVN. The reviews are hid! Because <laughs> we just found out that there's between wax paper and parchment paper the hard way. Like, what's the difference? One, you can use the oven safely, and the other, you can use it in seven, uh, use it in the oven if thing you're trying to make happen to be fire. Yes. <laughs> in 1930, a a in in Adelaide, Shelby found an apparatus for obtaining criminal confessions. The police put the aspect into a darkened chamber where they are confined by human skeleton with glowing red eyes at question, and some with a voice translated from the interrogator behind it. Throw a microphone in its mouth. A camera concealed on its skull was to record the, reflect the confessions. What? CONFESS YOUR SINS TO THE uh, CRIME SKELETON! I love that. Customer, can we get a plate of French fries for the table? Me for today's waiter. Uh, I don't think we're allowed to feed the tables. <laughs> Boss, can I talk to you for a sec? Me? What's up? You're doing a great job. I just want those ta I want those tables to starve. Just another day at the Mimic Cafe. The Mimic Cafe. 
I need to stop picking up my face. The problem is that there's textures on there, and I'd prefer if there weren't. That's what Dev says. We discovered that having to remove the textures will cause new, more texture, or er, er, textures to appear. Surely, if I remove this new texture, I will be gone forever. By Telos, this can't be happening. <laughs> oh dear. Can we talk about how chill this MF is? Oh yeah, the King of Hyrule. From the worst freaking version of Zelda a game I mean, there has ever been. Or it was a movie or something, I don't remember. Anyway, doesn't dress too flashy despite being the mother freaking King of Hyrule. Appreciates times of peace. Seeing them as what any true warrior should strive for. Immediately, personally, goes to aid Duke Onklet when Ganon was attacking. Not to take of soldiers or Link or some um, um, crap. Despite being betrayed and sold out to Ganon by Duke Onklet, he, he says it's him to hard labor rather than death or imprisonment. 10 out of 10 Monarch would vote for. Oh, we gotta see this. Why King Harkonnen? That is a weird name. Anyway, why King Harkonnen is the best king of Hyrule? Because we're for peace and, and war. This peace is what all true warriors strive for. When Guo Odenem came to the king to tell how Gan had seen his car had died, his first instinct, instinct was, how can we help? Guo yourself was man willing to help another kingdom in, in need. When he thought uh, that Duke Anklet was under attack from Ganon, he went straight to Ugamelet and to help him out. Another selfless deed and willing to go all the way there just to help him out in the flesh. He soothes out his tears and makes a smart art decision by taking the Triforce of Courage to protect him. Another smart decision by suggesting Zelda send Link if he isn't hurt from within a month. Clearing his sick Earth of King as he is able to silence everyone with a simple ENOUGH! It's clear he has power, but isn't feared for it. A civil man still thinks about dinner, so he must obviously be respected by his people as he could consider as he could be considered a relatable a ruler. Clearly formidable opponent in duels, as Link claims Gan would be no match for the king. Thanks Zelda for saving him. Not kind of setting or unbelieving, but generally thanks for, for his daughter saving his life. Gives proper punishment to those who deserve it. Doesn't let that Duke Uncle get it out scot free. Gives back by his royal guards. He calls him your majesty and my liege, and follows his orders once again, showing that Hark Enion has power. Enjoys spending time with his, his daughter, holds her dear to him, doesn't put a lot of pressure on her, and enjoys her company. See the ending. I haven't and watched any of this, so please just spoil it. I don't, um, I'm not watching that. <laughs> Whatever. In case of implosion, look directly at an implosion. Because it's the opposite of an explosion. That's a joke. Valve actually put that side in game because playthroughs would destroy the generator and then turn around immediately and not see the implosion animation they worked so hard on. Dang. Judge of Ovazar Adventure Dialogue. I haven't watched this anime at all. I just can't. I'm going to eat this apple. 
started our Bazaar's Adventure Part 7 Steelball Run dialogue, I'm going to eat this apple. Jojo owes Bazaar Adventure Part 7 Steelball Run closing arc dialogue, I'm going to eat this apple. Jojo owes Bazaar Adventure Part 8 dialogue, this apple, or was he going to eat this apple, or my for character? Huh? What is he going to do with that apple? No, not whole. That is, I remember. That's right. I was going to peel this apple before eating it. Let me get this. Let me say it again. I'm going to peel this apple. Completely. Okay. <laughs> what? Today, a regular customer came into my store and told me she'd finished Panic Crush. And to be honest, I didn't think that was possible. I thought it was just iterated levels forever, but apparently it has 4,000 odd levels and it took her 4 years to complete. She even emailed them asking when there would be more levels, and they told her she could play any of their other games or replay the existing levels. The only true gamer. Bruh. Damn, she thick. What the heck is that? Is that supposed to be pancakes? Hang on. This is gonna be a long one. Eh, that's this one too. Where were you 20 years ago? 10 years ago? Where were you when I was new? When I was one of those innocent young maidens you always come to? How dare you? How dare you come to me now? When I am this? No, but guys, guys, we need to talk about how important this scene is because the companies have to learn about uh, the universe is they are so good and pure, they'll only appear to young virtual girls. Because Molly Crew is a middle-aged woman who has been living with Vance for most of her life, and is as far from innocent and original oh, as you can as you like to get. Because she's so angry at this creature, and like every that society tells her that she's lost, and she's thrown away through her own choices, is here now, when all that the unicorn represents is long since behind her. Because she knows, in a way, that only someone who's been stepped you has been steeped in an oppressive system her entire life, can never know that she's missed her chance and doesn't deserve to be seeing a unicorn now. And you know what? The unicorn doesn't give two fricks about her virginity or about her supposed loss of innocence and purity. She's not repelled by Ollie being older, being experienced, being a full human person. None of has that ever mattered to unicorns. All the people telling stories about them. None of does she step in to physically comfort her, her here. But before this ban uh, before long, this Bennett's wife becomes her a friend, close to her in more ways than Smindrick. This story is for revolutionary, you guys, and I have a lot of feelings about it. I heard Peter as as Beagle speak about this scene at a convention once. He he said he just kept writing and writing as a scene and suddenly here was this Powerful, moving dialogue which came out very strong and natural, flowing directly from inspiration. He said it was one of those moments when the writer just gets really lucky. This is one of those scenes you never easily get when you're 10 and comes up and punches you, you in the face when you're 30.
Wally Grew is a hero. I don't mean she's heroic. I mean that the last unicorn in book form explicitly defines what a hero should be. And she's, he meets the definition. Specifically, she's Larry's mentor. Or, and what it means to be a hero. The book doesn't expressly say this about Molly. Now I know oh, oh, that this is something Biko was conscious of as he wrote. And yet, there's a scene in the book. Lur, that's a weird name. Said, I am a hero. It is a trade no more. Like weaving or, or brewing. And like them, it has its own tricks and knacks and small arts. The true secret of being a hero lies in knowing the order of things. Quests may not not to be abandoned. Prophecies may not be left to rot like unpicked fruit. Unicorns may go unrescued for a long time, but not forever. The happy ending could not come in the middle of the story. The lady of Ma Ma Altia did not answer him. I guess, why not? Who says so? Heroes, Prince Lair replied sadly. Heroes know about order, about happy endings. Heroes know that some things are better than others. Carpenters, carpenters know grains and shingles and straight lines. Molly spent a lot of time thinking her role in life was the hero's lady. She shacked up with Captain Coley because she thought he was a hero and that was her role. Over time, she you came to understand how unheroic he was. She became bitter and derisive, pointing out what the true order of things was. Let's go back to our first scene where Kali is explaining to Ushmedric how he and his men all hate a King Haggard, and one day Haggard will have to pay a such a reckoning. A score of shaggy shadows hissed ascent, but Molly Grew's laughter fell like hell, rattling and stinging. <laughs> Mayhaps he will, she mocked, but it won't be to such chattering cravens he'll pay it. His castle rots and totters more each day, and his men are too old to set up an armor, but he'll rule forever, for all Captain Coley dares. Schmendrick raised an eyebrow, and Coley a flushed wreck. It's red. You must understand, he mumbles. King Haggard has his bowl. Ah, the red bowl, the red bowl, Molly hooted. I tell you what, Ed Cully, after all these years in the wood with you, I've come to think the bowl's not but the pet name you give your cowardice. If I hear that fable once more, I'll go down and down old Haggard myself. And know you for a enough, Cully roared. Not before strangers. He tugged the sword. And Molly opened her arms to it, still laughing. Within a day, Molly grew her husband the unicorn, set on a quest, and with her, and this is my eyelash when she learns to go directly to Haggard's castle, and becomes a pivotal player in destroying King Haggard and the Red Bull. Molly understands the order of things when Mandrick doesn't. When the Red Ed Bull is about to beat the unicorn strip, Edric is all, well, well, should happen so long. It's Molly who yells and screams at him that this must not happen. 
how you might have been an aggregate Streisand all his life before this, but this is the moment. When he has to draw deep on his true power to save her. So he does, and when he does, while he understands how absolutely terrible becoming human is for the unicorn, which Mendrick it doesn't, even though he heard the unicorn say that Nikos would have done better to let a unicorn die than to make it into a man, and she didn't. Bali is work in Haggard's castle is fairy tale like in nature. Sorry between Cinderella, my father says you to do his work there is to do there is to do and used to sing, and the labors of Hercules are the biblical Israelites. According to the novel, Molly grew, cooked, and laundered, scrubbed stone, men, armor, and iron swords. She topped wood, milled flour, groomed horses, and cleaned their stalls, melted down in gold and silver for the king's coffers, and made bricks without straw. It roared for her work, so everyone first said things happened. Lurk comes that there has never been and sing in this castle or cats or the smell of good cooking. But now that Molly Grew has come, all these things have come to pass. And in the end, this work is pivotal. If Molly weren't there, the cat that wouldn't have come, and without the cat, they would have known how they would have they never would have known how to find the red bull. A point of the fact is, Molly is able to do what she does for the unicorn because she's older, she's more experienced, she's weathered. In hardship and seeing dreams broken, and knows what to hold on to and what to give up on. She knows that love is a very fine thing, but unicorns are something else. And in the end, her reward is that her being with the unicorn wasn't the end of the story. When she had reached the end of her suitability for fairy tales, the last unicorn is Molly and Smedrick, who had lived for some time already, coming to their beginnings and settling them on the path for their next story. For the real work of their adult lives. I never watched The Last Unicorn. <laughs> Did I even tell you guys I pretend to know how to play an instrument for three years only two people ever figured it out? I don't mean I was like some people I could play guitar. I mean I was sitting in band class holding a French horn for my lips and look at the music and not understanding of it or knowing how to play a single note for three years. I two people who were my best friend who knew I was too stupid to play such complicated an instrument and the only other hornist in my section who had to desperately cover for me because he knew I had blackmail material on him. I only came in clean this year in my senior speech and to this day people still call me melophony and the no hit wonder. <laughs> the no hit wonder. I'm sorry, it looks like your bags are too heavy for this plane. You'll have to remove some items and put them into your carry-on, which is going on the same plane. It's because OSHA regulations! A single person is not allowed to lift more than 50 pounds! Baggage handlers are people! You pay more for heavy bags because the handlers are so sweet! We use a bike system to lift those. If the tall weight mattered so much, passengers would get it weighed. But we don't question that now, do we? That actually makes the whole thing make a lot more sense. Thank you. Alright, I think that's a good one to end the video on. If you enjoyed today's video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow, but I guess we'll see you then. Until then, goodbye!